Excellent, excellent. Um, thank you all for attending today. We're, um, you know, we're really excited to be walking you guys through some of the things that we've done with other colleges. And um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Alex Pritchett, um, the, one of the founders of Upswing, which is a student retention company. Um, we're based in um, Austin, Texas. I uh, also have a, an office out in Durham, North Carolina. And um, basically wanted to take some time today to talk with everyone about some of the different profiles of colleges that we've seen, um, how they've really done a good job of impacting student success on their campuses, and hopefully there are some really key takeaways for you all um, that you can take back to your campus as well. Um, what, you know, what I, what I encourage is during the, during the webinar, um, I'll, take, I'll take a couple periodic breaks um, just for questions and um, for you all to maybe um, share some information with each other too. So really, you know, opening this up to kind of like a forum type discussion versus just, um, just more of a lecture, um, typically that ends up being the best kind of uh, webinar, at least from what we found. So hopefully you guys can participate and um, let's go ahead and get things started. Um, so you know one of the one of the really um, interesting things about the whole higher education landscape is how really how different each college is from one another. So um, you know you have obviously you have different students, different faculty, um, different types of students, different types of faculty at each school. Um, but then also you know one of the really important things to factor in when thinking about how you can best um, build support services for your college is. What is the culture like um, at your college or university? Um, you know, there's there are a couple of different types of cultures that will really affect the types of services that work best for you all. Is it, you know, is your college more of a community type of um, feel to it? Is it, um, you know, mostly online students? Are you a big four-year university within a college town? Um, so taking time to factor in what is that profile look like for your college um, really makes a big difference when it comes to selecting the services and the type of impact that you're able to have on students. Um, so, you know, one of the one of the questions that you might be asking yourself is, you know, um, our college is different from so many others, and if this is true across the board, um, how can I then go in and uncover some new insights um, based on things that other schools have done? So, this is this is really what we're trying to unleash today is um, share with you all some of the insights that we've learned from some of our partner colleges in terms of how they're supporting student success. Um, and hopefully that'll get you thinking about ways that you can, um, you know, you can maybe change things up or augment some of the services that you're currently doing at your school. So across the board, there's, um, there's a couple high level categories that your college may fit into. And um, specifically, we want to talk through these four categories today. Um, you have the two year single campus college, um, the two year multi campus college, four-year college, and then also um, mission-driven colleges as well. Um, and really, you know, really trying to factor in what kind of college are you and what are the types of considerations that um, you'll be looking for, your college will be looking for when it comes to supporting students. Uh, and then what we want to do is really walk through each of those um, points of consideration and talk through some of the success strategies that um, we've seen work out really well with some of the colleges that have partnered with Upswing so far. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and dive in. What, what I want to talk through first is the single campus to your college. So this is, um, this college here that we're highlighting is Blaine Community College. They've been a partner with Upswing for about three years now. And one of the things, you know, you'll find with the single campus to your college is often there's a really great sense of community there. Um, most of the students, um, most of the students attending the college live in the local area. Um, you know, many of them have grown up there. They've had jobs there. Their families are there. So there's this really great sense of community and it helps to really connect, you know, not only the students with each other, but also the students and faculty and um, you get almost a, a family feel to the college. I mean, you know, what they find is what they found is that the personalized support that they're able to provide at these colleges is often a, a really key advantage that um, that these often smaller colleges will have over some of um, some of the larger campuses. Um, so a couple of the support considerations that um, these two-year single-campus colleges will factor in um, 
are things like staff. So figuring out, you know, how to best staff your college is really important for these two-year colleges, um, the two-year single campus especially, where, um, you know, especially if they're in a rural town or um, not necessarily close to a large city, often the staffing aspect um, becomes somewhat of a, a tricky situation or a balance where you may have, you know, staff or faculty who are commuting over to the campus. Um, so really finding ways to make sure that you have a strong staff is a huge consideration for these colleges. Additionally, one of the things that, you know, we've seen across these two-year colleges is just the fact that a lot of them end up being non-traditional where, you know, because it is a community type feel to it, you'll have, you'll have students from kind of all walks of life from the community. They could be, you know, 18 years old. It could be 68 years old going back to um, pursue an additional degree. So factoring in um, the non-traditional student is often one of the most key um, components for these colleges. Uh, the third, you know, one of the third really key considerations here is, is the location of the college. So again, you know, understanding that um, the college really becomes a very important part of the community. Um, helping to build a lot of the things that you do at that college around that community is really important for making sure that you can really derive a, a ton of value out of that small college, um, helping to build upon a lot of the um, a lot of the kind of nuances of the community and really understanding you know where students coming from and how can we help to uh, make them feel comfortable at the college. And then the last thing here, you know, one of the other considerations is um, really the support tools that are offered by these colleges. So making sure that um, when you're looking at supporting students, they have the right tools in place. Um, even, you know, even though you might be a smaller college or um, more of a, like a budget conscious college, making sure that the support tools that you do have in place are even more so effective and proven is a very important consideration for some of these um, smaller two-year colleges. Um, is there, you know, is there, so now I want to um, take some time just to ask you guys, is there anything that you would add as one of the most important considerations that you would be making at a two-year college, kind of outside of this list of items? It looks like here, uh, Diane, um, Diane said that she agrees that, you know, the, the sense of community is, um, is one thing that's really important at her college, and, um, you know, I'd imagine that that really resonates with students, where, students are going to higher education, you know, often, often, you know, learning is the number one objective, but also if you can build that sense of community, it, it almost acts as a, as an additional learning experience or an additional support tool in itself where students who are coming to college and they feel like there's a strong sense of community, um, you know, often they're, they're going to be in there for the long haul. They're not going to, they're not going to drop out or they're not going to have some of the issues that a student might have if, if they go to college and feel like, you know, they're doing it on their own or they don't feel like they have a great support system built out. So this is this is certainly one of the key things that some of these two-year colleges have done that um, have been really successful is, is really building that strong sense of community. Okay, great. And um, it looks like Floor mentioned that, um, you know, their college, Austin Community College, is right now looking for a, a one-stop shop for students where they can get access to things like tutoring, advising services on one single site. So I think, you know, this really hits on the support tools aspect where um, I think, you know, what more colleges are, are trying to think about today is for all these support tools that we have, how can we make it so that we're being more efficient with the support that we're bringing on board? So, you know, not having, you know, five different tools to do the job of uh, perhaps one or two tools. Um, so that, that's something interesting, and that's a that's certainly a trend that we've seen recently, where you know colleges are coming to us and they're saying things like, um, you know, what we've we've offered online tutoring in the past, we've offered the ability for students to check into our learning center, we've we've offered advising tools, but never before have we had a single solution where we can start offering a lot of these things underneath one umbrella. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of the advantages that schools are seeing when it comes to I'm starting to consolidate some of these services underneath one roof. Okay, um, so you know what I want to talk through next um, is basically the, some of the success strategies that some of our schools have implemented. Um, and it looks like Ryan um, just mentioned that you know the one-stop shop is more convenient for some of their non-traditional students as well, where 
you know, a non-traditional um, student is going to be, you know, often they have a part-time job, um, they have family commitments, they have, you know, they have other responsibilities and commitments outside of the classroom that the traditional student might not have to be um, aware of. So doing things like providing online advising or online tutoring um, underneath one roof is really helpful for some of those non-traditional students. So that's a really good point there, Ryan. <clears throat> so, you know, a couple of the things that a few of our schools have done um, to really impact student success within kind of the two-year um, single campus model is one of the things is augment, augmenting some of the um, support staff that they already have. And kind of, you know, one of the things we hear time and time again is, is things like this, where we'll talk to a college and they'll say, yeah, you know what, we have a support staff on, on hand here. Um, we have tutors that we've recruited. Um, often it's, you know, a mix of peer and community tutors. But then they'll come to us and they'll say things like, we know that there are gaps when it comes to, you know, providing physics tutoring or providing chemistry tutoring. Um, if we do if we do recruit a tutor for that subject it's it's not long before they're recruited away or they start a job somewhere else that can maybe pay them a little bit more um, so we have a really high turnover rate for those subjects um, that are a bit more advanced like physics or chemistry um, and then at the same time you know what they'll say is um, how some of those resources aren't necessarily um, around the clock where a student can come to the learning center to get tutoring from you know nine to five, nine to six. But if it's nighttime, again, if they're a non-traditional student, um, perhaps they're working during the day, taking classes at night. Um, often there ends up being um, somewhat of a gap in those services that can be offered. So a lot of the schools that we've worked with have started looking um, to outside resources to help augment some of their staff already. One of the ways that we're doing that with um, Bladen Community College is they're actually accessing our network of tutors at Upswing. Um, so we have, you know, over, I think it's around 1,200 tutors or so right now that um, colleges can tap into where if they want to start providing some additional services um, outside of what they're already providing at the Learning Center, they can start tapping into some of those outside resources as well. Um, similarly, and kind of within that same vein is you know, really making sure that you're providing flexibility for non-traditional students. Um, so one of the other things that, you know, we've been able to really help colleges do is connect even some of their own tutors with, um, with their students on upswing, where a student's able to come in and, you know, if I'm a non-traditional student, um, I'm not actually able to physically get to campus, but I still want to meet with one of the school's tutors. Um, I can log in, schedule a session, and have that same type of interaction as if I was right there directly with that tutor. Um, so, you know, really making sure that you're understanding some of the needs in terms of the flexibility that these non-traditional students need um, and making sure that those are met. And, you know, that could be done in a, in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, I know, I know that a, a lot of colleges, almost most of the colleges now are providing online courses and that's really helped them come a long way when it comes to meeting the need of a lot of those non-traditional students where they're able to take a self-paced online course after work, after the kids are down for bed um, on the weekends. So really understanding that has been a key component to success. Another thing here is, you know, really understanding some of those geographical needs of your students. Um, so this, this really gets back to that whole sense of community that can be built within a campus and um, especially within some of these um, within some of these community campuses where um, you know the college the college is really focused around the community and a lot of events might happen on campus and students just really feel tied in um, even further with the community through their school. So making sure that not only are you really building up that sense of community but also understanding some of the geographical needs. Um, and you know what what I mean by that is certainly there's there's some times where, you might roll out services and it would require you know strong internet connection or um, different types of technology so really making sure that you know before you bring on a, a new solution or a new uh, a new service that your school is well equipped to um, be able to support that service whatever it is uh, and then the last thing here you know is really um, looking for synergies in the support tools so i'll go back to the example of blaine community college where um, they've come on board with with us, but they've been using it a couple different ways, which is pretty cool. So 
you know, not only are they able to connect their students with tutors online, um, but they're also able to do things like, you know, have their students check into the learning center. So, you know, if I'm showing up for drop-in tutoring, I can go and check up, check in real quick on Upswing. Um, or if I want to go and schedule a session with a campus tutor, I can do that as well. And one of the really, you know, one of the really important things about this is, um, especially for some of these smaller colleges, it's it's a great way to save money where instead of going out and, you know, spending money on five different services, five different implementations, five different types of support, um, all that information is underneath one roof. You know, you're, you're integrating one time, um, you're getting one straight data feed versus having to take information and parse it all together. Um, so it really saves you a lot of man hours on the back end where you're not constantly having to involve your tech team, you're not having to bring in data folks. Um, so that's a really good way to help, help save money across some of those uh, smaller schools um, especially. Okay, um, do you guys have anything to add here in terms of the success strategies? Maybe, um, you know, maybe what are some of the ways that you found um, your school's been most successful when it comes to support services or any, you know, any unique things that your school's doing to help make an impact on, um, on student retention or persistence? One of, the, uh, one of the great things also, and you know, I'm about to jump into this too, is that there are certain things that I think some of the different types of um, colleges do really well. So, you know, we've talked a lot about the, um, the community aspect of the two-year college, and um, this is obviously, this is something that some of the larger colleges definitely want to adopt as well, is, you know, always think about, like, how can you be providing that sense of community, even though your school's a bit bigger? Um, it looks like, you know, someone just mentioned that, um, okay, great question. So Lisa said that they just started a pilot program with Upswing, and how do you have students sign into Upswing for on-site tutor sessions? Um, that's a really good question, Lisa. So a couple of schools do it a few different ways. Um, in fact, there's, there's three ways that students have, you know, been able to sign on to their upswing session at schools that are using this for that check-in, check-out feature, and I'll, I'll kind of walk through each one of those. Um, number one is a couple of the schools are using a um, kind of a computer lab approach where a student, when they come to the learning center, the first thing they'll do is get on one of the computers at the computer lab, and they'll be able to check into their session um, directly from that computer. So what they would do is log into the upswing account, um, check in on the computer, and then all that information is documented in real time for um, any of the Learning Center admins, where you can see at any point in time where are students um, checked into, who are the students that are checked in, and how long they've been there. Um, so that's one model that's, um, that schools are using. Uh, the second model is a somewhat of a kiosk model where there's a dedicated computer or tablet, um, laptop, basically at the, at the front of the Learning Center where as students are matriculating into the Learning Center, the first thing they're doing is they're checking in on that tablet or they're checking in on that computer. Um, and that way, you know, it's front and center where if you have, you know, capacity to put a computer or a couple computers at the front, that can essentially be a check-in station for any students that are entering the Learning Center. Um, and then the third option is uh, students can actually um, check in on their own device when they get to the Learning Center, if, if that's your preference, where um, you know, if they're in line, if they get to the learning center, they're in line, they can actually just go ahead and check in either on their phone or on their laptop um, if they'd like to, and then that way um, they don't have to wait in line or they don't have to wait for a computer to become available in order to check in for their tutoring session. So it's, there are a couple of different things that are being done. Um, you know, what I would recommend is really try to figure out which, which of those types of models works best for you guys at your college and um, try it out. And, you know, if that, if that works, great. If that doesn't work, then, you know, there's a couple other models to try out as well. So, and it may, it may end up being a mix of, you know, one or two of them where you might have the dedicated kiosk, but then you might also allow students to um, check in on, on their phones as well if they'd like to. Okay, great. Um, all right, and it looks like we have another question here from Floor. So Floor asked, um, can you further describe how other colleges are using Upswing to provide online tutoring? Are they using their existing learning center tutors slash labs tutors? Um, so basically, you know, the way that things work with Upswing is um, schools, if they're looking at Upswing for tutoring, will um, subscribe to kind of one of two models. 
So the first model is essentially allowing the college to connect its own resources with students. So this would, uh, so for this would be, um, you know, allowing any of ACC tutors to connect with students online, where students can go in, um, they can schedule either an online or an in-person session with one of your tutors. And then at the time of that session, um, let's say it's an online session, the student would be connecting directly with uh, that tutor through Upswing. So they'd be using, you know, the audio video component, uh, virtual whiteboard, um, and they'd be able to connect remotely with any of your tutors. And typically this is, you know, the tutoring that takes place during the day where you want to extend some of your learning services to um, distance learners or students on other campuses, um, basically students that aren't able to physically get to the campus. Um, now, a second thing that they're doing is also using their own tutors um, to allow students to schedule in-person sessions with them. So basically having one area where students can you know, not only schedule these online sessions, but also um, schedule these in-person sessions, having all that information underneath one roof, um, and then getting feedback on the end of each session afterwards. So really aggregating a lot of this data into one place so that when you're trying to figure out, okay, what does our tutoring landscape look like right now? All you have to do is log in your admin dashboard. You can see all the sessions that have happened with your tutors, either online or in person. Feedback from those sessions, the durations, uh, makes it really easy to keep track of all the tutoring activity in your center. <clears throat> Um, the second option, you know, that colleges are doing is, um, again, looking, looking towards augmenting some of their existing learning services with, um, with some of Upswing's tutors. So um, basically what they'll do is they'll elect to typically purchase a certain um, number of hours at the beginning of each school year, and students will be able to tap into um, those online sessions with Upswing tutors where they will schedule an ups upswing session 24-7. Um, you know, we have hundreds of different subjects that we support. So if your school is ever, you know, under the mindset that, you know, you need more tutors in a certain subject, but you can't recruit them, or you want to start offering support after hours or on weekends more, um, that's, cer that's certainly a model that schools have used to help meet some of those objectives. Um, now, what often happens kind of in practice is schools will use um, somewhat of a we call it the hybrid model or a mix of both of these where they're bringing their own tutors online for students to connect with during the day, but then they'll also, um, they'll also subscribe to some upswing tutoring hours as well, where if the school's tutors aren't available, then students are still able to get, you know, time support from a tutor to upswing. So that's, that's kind of how things work. Okay. Um, yeah, we have another great question from Wendy. It looks like um, she's wondering, you know, what kind of pushback um, have we gotten from any sort of campus IT when it comes to things like security, confidentiality of student records, et cetera? Uh, that's a great question, Lindy, and that's, you know, that's a question that we get from almost all the colleges that um, we talk to before we start working with them. So our most, you know, our most important um, objective is to make sure that we're always completely FERPA compliant, um, you know, not sharing any sort of information, um, never disclosing any personally identifiable information and um, often you know what we do is we leave it up to the schools if they even want to integrate any of that personally identifiable information into our system um, you know that's something i'll talk about in a little bit is what we're doing when it comes to reporting and some more advanced analytics um, but at the base um, basically you know what what we look for with campus it is um, a single sign-on integration um, if the school supports it. So when a student comes on upswing, they're signing on with their school credentials. Um, they already know their, you know, their student ID or their student username and password, and they're logging with those same credentials on upswing. Um, making the sign-in process much easier and then also making it so that we're not actually going through and um, managing any of these names and passwords. We're simply integrated with your IT system. So we, um, you know, we have some pretty detailed security documentation as well as um, an outline of our purpose compliance that we share with everyone uh, before they start working with Upswing. So we can certainly share that with you as well, Wendy. Oh, great. Okay. So for, you know, another great question is the kind of training that we provide. So one of the really cool things about Upswing is our HERO program. So, you know, HERO is an acronym, stands for Higher Education Retention Officer. And every school that works with Upswing has their own HERO. And what the hero does is, you know, really work day in and day out with that school to make sure that they're successful, um, whatever their definition of success is. 
And you know, often that's doing things like you know helping admins understand the data reports or um, you know showing them showing them how to set up their campus locations, sh showing them how to you know manage students on the system. And one of the key things that the heroes do before we start any partnership is they'll actually work with the school to do ongoing training with not only the tutors at the school, but also the admins at the school as well. Um, so you have that personalized person that is going to come to your school. They're going to show you exactly how to use the system. Um, they'll be able to do things like, you know, virtual webinars, um, virtual trainings for your tutors. So even if you have additional tutors come on board um, during the middle of the school year, they're still able to get a really high level of training from that upstream hero. Okay. Um, all right. So what, you know, what I want to move on to next is um, just talking about some of the multi-year campuses that we've been working with in terms of two-year colleges um, and talking through some of the things that have really worked well for them. Um, again, you know, a lot of their considerations are similar to the single campus um, college, but there are a couple some somewhat slight differences. So, you know, one of the really important things for these colleges, because they have multiple campuses, is data access. So, um, you know, one of the colleges I want to highlight here is um, a two-year college in North Carolina called College of Albemarle, who's been working with Upswing now for just over a year. And they have multiple campuses all throughout the state. Um, and one of the really, you know, one of the things that they came to us with kind of at the beginning was talking about the different systems they were using. So, you know, um, and I, I think this is pretty common across across most of the colleges we've spoken with where they come to us and they'll say, you know, we're, we have an online tutoring provider, we also have a retention service, and then we have a, you know, we have a tracking system for our learning center, and um, we have all this data, but it's, it's somewhat disparate, and um, especially when you start looking at these colleges with multiple campuses, you know, each additional campus that you have, the, the data, kind of the, the siloing of data becomes even more exponential, where it's tougher and tougher to get all that information in one place. Um, and it's very difficult to make any sort of insights out of that data um, unless you have a really good way of managing all that information. So that's, you know, that's one of the key considerations for these colleges. Um, the second, you know, the second really key consideration is location for them. Really understanding, you know, the different, you know, the different personalities of each of your campuses where most colleges will have what they call, you know, a main campus. Um, but then they'll have different satellite campuses that um, you know, will still support a lot of students, but they're not necessarily the main campus. And it's not always you know, the first line of thought to say, OK, what, is, you know, what, would, what would this implementation mean for these satellite campuses? But really making sure that um, you're cognizant of those different types of locations and what that means for them is, is very important for colleges. Um, and I'll talk in a little bit about how you know, we've been able to bridge that gap and, um, you know, help colleges have additional outreach to some of those satellite campuses. Uh, the, the third thing that, you know, these schools think about pretty frequently are what kind of, you know, online tools can they provide students with, um, especially if, um, you know, if, if they do have a large percentage of their students who are at remote campuses, often online tools become one of the best and, again, most cost, um, cost efficient ways of connecting a lot of your own resources with students who might be on on various campuses or not necessarily located on that main campus. Um, and then, you know, the, the last thing that I just want to talk through is this idea of continuity where um, you want to make sure that as a college, you're providing a very high level of services um, to students and very high level of learning regardless of, you know, where they are, who they are, what kind of um, course they're taking. So having that, um, that idea or that, you know, that mentality of, continuity across campuses is really important for making sure that you can really control the, the work product that your college is providing. Um, so, you know, a couple ways that, um, a couple ways that we've seen these colleges address some of these issues is, um, you know, one of the big things, again, is, um, again, with, with COA has been consolidating a lot of that data across campuses. Um, so one of the, you know, one of the kind of cool things that we've been able to implement within the um, past year or so is um, a comprehensive admin dashboard where you're able to go in and see across all your campuses what does the current state of tutoring look like or what does, you know, the current state of advising look like. Um, 
and you're able to do things like manage those learning centers where you can see check-ins on your remote campus or you can see tutoring sessions that have been scheduled on your main campus. I um, mean, having that one, you know, that one portal makes it so that you're able to view everything in one place versus having to go into, you know, four or five different systems, try to download data, um, you know, mess around with Excel, try to get everything lined up properly. Um, we have it where you can really easily download data, run queries on the dashboard, um, and then see information that you need quickly without having to involve a lot of you know, technical staff or, or data analysts or any Excel experts at your school. So really making that easy and accessible has been a, a key component, I think, for a couple of our colleges in terms of just simplifying the overall support process. Um, you know, the, and then the second thing here is, um, you know, really understanding some of these regional differences. One of the things that a lot of our colleges have done and we've, we've really helped them to do is roll out um, what we call a campus ambassador program. And this is basically, um, you know, a student intern from the college who's pretty actively involved within college life. So often they're, you know, in the work study program or in student government, um, you know, maybe head of a couple clubs on campus. Um, and really making it so that they're the ones that are outreaching to students instead of having your learning center admin do the do all the outreach or instead of you know having upswing do any of the outreach we're coordinating kind of in conjunction with the learning center with this campus ambassador and what we've been able to see is that the impact that that person has on getting students excited and um, eager to use a system is so much better than having you know a faculty member or an outside um, person come in and try to do that so with you know with coa in particular what we've done is um, we rolled out um, a campus ambassador program on each of their campuses where that you know that campus ambassador was taking classes on that campus so they really understand the campus well how it works um, what are the areas of the campus where there's going to be you know a lot of foot traffic during the day um, and then what they'll do is go ahead and do things like you know, table and talk to the students about all the different support services that are offered by the school. Um, and, you know, upstream might just happen to be one of them. They'll do things like demos or help students sign up. Um, so that's, you know, pretty easy and um, really effective way to start connecting your school, especially if you're dealing with multiple campuses. Um, and then what we do is every other week or so, we'll have a um, kind of like a a conference between the different um, campus ambassadors where we'll all dial in, we'll talk about uh, all the campus ambassadors, we'll talk about, okay, here's what we tried out this week, here's what worked well, here's what didn't, here's what I want to try out next time. Um, and, you know, often the learning center is involved in that conversation. They might say, hey, you know what, we want to start pushing this additional service or we want to start telling students that, um, you know, we're beginning to offer more and more um, I don't know, Spanish tutoring on campus. So make sure to, you know, check out the Spanish tutors at the Learning Center. And so it really becomes a good way to start reaching out to students in, in various ways. Um, and then, you know, one of the, the third thing on here is really looking online for some additional support. Um, so again, you know, realizing that, again, a lot of these colleges with multiple campuses, um, the conversation becomes, okay, we have one main learning center on this campus, um, but you know we don't have a ton of additional learning centers on some of our satellite campuses. So starting to look online for additional support is is really an important um, way to start connecting your campus, um, connecting your learning center who you know you've trained those tutors, you've put in the time and dedication to get them up to speed on things. Making sure that you can use some online tools to expand their reach has been really effective for schools like. Um, College of Albemarle to start reaching more and more students on their campus. Um, and then, yeah, the last thing there really is ensuring that high quality support for students at all locations. Um, so you can really start to see how, you know, things started com coming together where you have the campus ambassadors who are talking to students about different services. Um, but then you're also taking that physical learning center, um, making it available to students across all campuses and then um, also providing them with, you know, 24 seven tutoring as well. So you're really much more in charge of, okay, what kind of support can we provide students with and how can we really like have an impact on them graduating and them succeeding um, during their time at the college. So taking into consideration these things is often um, really important for these multi-campus colleges.
Okay. Um, do you guys have anything to add there? Any questions? Uh, looks like we got some feedback. It sounded like you guys really like the idea of the um, campus ambassador program, and that's been, you know, that's been something that we found to be one of the, I think, one of the best ways to just relate to students, where they're going out there, they're talking with a peer versus you know talking with us. Um, they're seeing it firsthand from that peer, and and, and they're gonna, you know, they're gonna get it straight from the peer. They're gonna tell them, hey, you know what, I I've used this, I've used this service in my writing class, and here's what I thought about it. Um, so it it becomes a really really trustworthy way to start spreading word of some of the services that um, your learning center can provide. Okay, um, what we want to talk to next is um, going to be the four-year college and university. So, um, you know, often often these guys are a little bit different from some of the two-year colleges. Um, often much larger, often, um, often universities versus colleges. So, there's um, sometimes there's that research aspect as well. Um, so getting into some of their considerations, um, you know, one of the biggest things that they'll talk to us about is um, the idea of really utilizing their network. Um, so figuring out ways to do things like, um, you know, if they're going to be offering tutoring services, how can they tap into like their graduate students, or how can they tap into some of their alumni. Um, so really utilizing the network to start connecting people is often one of their first uh, first questions that they'll, they'll have for us. Um, second, the second thing is making sure that these services are relatable. So doing, um, doing things that, doing things from a learning center perspective, from a support perspective that really reach out to students and help connect with them. Um, especially since, you know, most of the time um, students at these four-year institutions, um, especially if they're undergraduate, are going to be more of the traditional student. Um, so they're not, you know, they're not always excited about, you know, the learning center or um, coming and getting tutoring. And, you know, we, we've kind of ourselves, one of the things that we've seen is that there's somewhat of a, a stigma, I guess, with tutoring. Um, so making it so that whenever we're talking to students about, you know, tutoring or any support services, it comes off as something that they want to really participate in versus, you know, something that they're going to because they're struggling or something that they're going to because, you know, their professor or an admin on campus told them to go to. Um, so I can talk a little bit about uh, some of the ways that schools have really made their services more relatable to students. Uh, the third thing for, for these guys is going to be um, just the idea of scale. So how can you, um, how can you do things at a much larger level? And, you know, some of, some of the two-year colleges might run into this, um, this same question as well, especially um, you know, some of the colleges that are in larger cities or support students across multiple campuses. How can you do things at your learning center at your college that scale out really well to students across campus um, or across multiple campuses? Um, and then, you know, the last thing on here is just insight. So, again, understanding um, what are, like, what are the things that attract students most often or what kind of impact are our services actually having on students? So really getting that level of insight is, is one of the key things that these schools look forward to um, experimenting with, with Upswing. And so, you know, a couple of the strategies that, um, that we've really helped some of these colleges use and what they've, what they've put in place um, number one is just really effectively utilizing the resources that they have. Um, so, you know, one of the areas that these four-year universities can really benefit from is um, the fact that they have a, a pretty, you know, typically a pretty built-out network of graduate-level students or upperclassmen. And um, we, see, we see more often with four-year colleges the fact that they'll have um, a peer tutoring center or peer tutoring services that are offered to students. Um, and this, you know, this often becomes a really good way for them to both recruit and, you know, retain more and more tutors year over year, where they're not having to go out into the community and recruit. They automatically have students that have, you know, they're either majoring in the subject or they've taken the class or um, maybe they've TA'd in that class before. Um, bringing them on as some of the support resources often becomes a really impactful way to reach out to some of the younger students on campus. Um, and, and we've even seen, you know, some some schools take it a step further where they're doing things like, um, you know, utilizing peer mentors or, um, you know, one of our colleges, um, University of North Texas, calls it their um, 
their academic coaching um, that takes place where they'll have um, they'll have people that are connected with students just to talk to them about you know their academic life and you know things like what courses do you need to take or um, like how are you doing in class and more so just talking about um, how they're doing in class versus the strict tutoring or the um, the actual learning of the academic content. So being able to really break things up that way is a good way for some four-year colleges to utilize the resources that are already there at the college. Um, the next, you know, the next thing I want to talk about here is um, what are some of the ways that um, you know different colleges are finding ways to relate to students. Um, and you know, this is where I'd like to hear maybe some of your feedback in terms of what are some of the things that you all are doing. Uh, we've heard colleges and some of the colleges that we've worked with have told us things like, you know, they're doing open houses for students where students can come in and, you know, meet their advisor before the school semester begins or they can come in and, you know, do a tour of the learning center to see what kind of tutoring services are provided. Um, they're doing different kind of fun things like, you know, fairs, like a, you know, like a fall festival or like a spring festival and, those kinds of creative things really help to draw in students and make them more and more aware of, you know, the different services that are offered and really how, how things work um, across, across the campus. Are you guys finding that, you know, you experiment with different creative ways to reach out to students? And if so, what, what are some of the ways that you're doing that? Oh, that's really cool. Okay, so yeah, uh, Coy mentioned that they're doing what they call SOS at their school. So student online services um, help sessions. And these are sessions where at the beginning of the semester, students can come in and um, get login help with various online services and account problems. And man, that's a great idea because you wouldn't, I mean, a lot of times what, what we'll have students reaching out to us about is, um, you know, how do I log in? What kind, of, um, what kind of process do I have to go through to get an account? And, I imagine that you know that saves you guys a lot of support time during the semester, during the school year. Um, if you bring students in on day one and start showing them, okay, not only you know here are the services that you have, but here's how to log into them for the first time, so that when they're going in and logging in a second time, um, they're not encountering that login barrier once again. So that's I think that's a really helpful way to just again begin to eliminate some of those barriers for getting students to utilize these services. Thanks for sharing that, Coy. Oh, great. And uh, Joanna mentioned that some of their teachers are actually bringing the class to the learning center, giving them a short tour. Um, and I would imagine, you know, that that'd be a, a great way not only for them to learn where the learning center is, but also maybe to meet some of the tutors at the learning center as well. Um, have you found that you know a lot of students will then come back shortly after that for support, Joanna? Wow. Okay. And then Koi, Koi mentioned that they've they've seen a 50% drop in um, the semester help desk tickets. That's that's pretty incredible. And um, you know that gets back to kind of that idea of you know how can you do things on your campus that help you save time later on and having you know one day or half a day where students come in and log in for the first time if that can save you 50 percent that's a that's a really I think that's a really smart way to begin the semester um, and you know maybe you can even if you guys think about some of these ideas you're that you've implemented I'm starting to pair some of them together where you know if, if someone like um, Joanna for example if one of the instructors at your school brings their class in you know maybe one of the activities that you'd want to have them do is test out some of those services and log in for the first time. Um, and, you know, not only will that help them get familiar with it, but it looks like you'll also see a pretty significant drop in those uh, help desk tickets as well. Great, and Ryan, uh, Ryan mentioned that um, they actually work with instructors to let them present in the class. Um, so they'll give presentations to English classes on plagiarism. Um, for math, they'll teach them to access math lab, et cetera. And, um, you know, I think that's another really cool way to, you know, not only tell students about the services, you can, you can tell them, you know, a million times about the different services that you offer, but a lot of students won't actually get it until they see it for the first time or until they actually hear you walk through it step by step. So I imagine that's a really, 
sounds like that's a really good way to, you know, again, eliminate that initial barrier of getting students comfortable with the services that are available to them. Great, and uh, let's see, Diane here mentioned that they also offer an alert program service for students at their school. Um, and this is to help with um, students that are making the transition from high school to college. So having different modules like um, that are really geared on retaining students, um, preventing them from getting on probation or preventing them from their GPA going down. Um, things like, you know, test taking tips, procrastination, tutoring services. Um, basically, you know, a lot of the things that you want students to know about that are not academic related. Um, not directly, you know, academic content related. So things like, you know, how to not procrastinate or how to study for a test. Um, you know, and we've seen a lot of a lot of schools will actually take, um, you know, they'll take a program like this. I think, you know, some might call it like the academic coaching and um, just have students in you know, either one to one or group session. Or they'll say, okay, at the beginning of the semester, we want you to sign for this academic coaching seminar, and then um, hopefully set up some good practices for them to stick to during the course of the school year. Okay, great. Yeah, these are, I mean, this is all really helpful feedback, and, and thank you guys all for participating. Um, you know, the next thing, one of the, and I, it's funny, all the ideas that you guys mentioned kind of lead in really, really well to the next point, which is really finding out ways to overcome some of the barriers to scaling your services. Um, you know, often I think, I think one of the common trends here is just getting students comfortable with this service for the first time, getting them, um, getting them acclimated to utilizing whatever services your college offers. So doing things like, you know, working with instructors on getting your services in the syllabus is really important. Or doing things like setting up a time for you to come in and talk to their class. Even if it's just for, you know, 10 or 15 minutes at the end of class, those kinds of things really help to build a, a good relationship, good rapport um, between the learning center and the student. All right, and then, you know, the last thing here is just collecting insight from um, the different support services that you offer. So really completing the feedback loop and, um, you know, one of the things that we've recently implemented here is we've always had it where um, students have been able to be feedback on any of the online sessions that they have with, you know, tutors or advisors. Um, but, we, but recently we also built out the ability for that feedback loop to also pertain to um, in-person sessions as well. So now whenever a student schedules an in-person session through Upswing, at the end of that session, we'll send a feedback form not only to the student but also to the tutor so that we can capture both of their um, both of their insights and make that available to admins to view um, after the sessions are complete. So you know really finding different ways to collect insight from your support services, whether it's you know through a technology or even if you're just um, you know getting them to fill out a a survey monkey link or a um, input information in a Google form, um, having having that information documented um, close to the time that it was actually completed is is usually really important. Because um, you know if you wait too long, people are going to forget; they're not going to fill it out, um, and then you won't have that information later on. Okay. All right. Um, the last profile of college that I want to talk about, and um, you know this might. This actually might be one that stretches across some of the other categories are some of these um, uh, mission-driven colleges or specialized mission colleges. So, um, you know, these are often colleges with a very specific mission in mind. So, um, you know, HBCUs, so historical black colleges and universities, or, um, you know, colleges with over 25% Hispanic students um, or students of a certain demographic are are typically classified as these mission specific colleges and um, you know one of the really big things for them is um, really around culture and celebrating the culture of their students um, you know whether it's an HBCU or whether it's a more of a Latino college um, making sure that they're doing the right things to set up their students for success um, there's a couple really key considerations that they, that they take into um, they take into effect here. So the first of which is diversity. So, you know, making sure that, um, you know, even though you may be a very mission-driven college, still having some level of diversity on campus and 
um, you know, understanding that even within, you know, your very focused student body, there's still going to be um, different types of students within that overall set. So making sure that um, that's understood and um, that diversity is celebrated is, is very important for these colleges. Um, the second thing here, which, you know, we found to be really helpful in a lot of the mission-driven um, colleges we've worked with is this concept of mentorship, um, where we can start connecting in, um, you know, either peers or alumni or community members to act as mentors to these students. Um, and that's been, you know, it's been specifically um, very effective in these mission-driven colleges. And I'll talk in a little bit about some of the ways that um, a few of our colleges have introduced the, the concept of mentorship. Um, the, the third concept is, uh, again, kind of going back to that idea of community. So, you know, really building a strong community with, within the mission-driven college. Um, it, often those end up being some of the strongest um, colleges in terms of having a good community because, you know, people can relate. People can relate to culture. Um, they can relate to, you know, some of some similar issues or similar aspirations. So really building a strong community around your type of student, um, even really regardless of, of your college breakdown is really important. Um, and then the last thing is just inspiration. So making sure that, um, you know, students are, are being incentivized and they're being shown a, a larger, broader picture. Um, you know, this, this often is something that um, I think all college students sometimes have have problems with where they're so focused on you know passing their class or doing well on a test um, that they don't often see kind of like what is the next step what is what is my career goal um, what is what is the next piece um, of the puzzle for me um, so yeah I'm gonna what I want to do now is elaborate on a couple of these um, <clears throat> kind of number one. Um, is again really understanding how to best relate to your students. Um, so one of the things, one of the colleges that we're working with is um, a college here in South Texas. It's called South Texas College, and they have a very, um, very high population of Latino students there. It's about 90%. Um, and one of the really cool things that they're able to do is, um, you know, do some studies based on their base, their students' preferences. So we can we can do things like show, um, you know, within the Latino population, how are those types of students learning differently than traditional students? Or how are different demographics of students at your college learning differently from one another? Um, you know, I think a good example of that could be to see, um, you know, you know you have non-traditional students, you have traditional students. Um, sometimes there's a mix um, of those on, on campus and um, being able to start to identify what are the trends and what are the ways that we can really develop a good connection with these different types of students is really important for your college. Um, so, you know, one of the things that we, we enable at most of our colleges is um, SIS integration. So you can actually integrate in things like, you know, the student's um, student schedule or the demographic information or their academic performance information. Um, and then we'll actually work with you on doing some research studies. Um, so we'll do things like, uh, you know, show you know, which types of students are most likely to need help in different subjects, or, um, you know, what time of day different uh, demographics or age, um, kind of age brackets of students are going in and seeking tutoring help. Um, and that really allows you to begin to cater, you know, not only your services, but also the, the marketing and the communication of your services to your students. Uh, the second one on here, which it looks like Carmen asked about, was the, um, the ability to provide mentorship to students. So one of the colleges, you know, right now that we're working with um, actually uses us to connect um, their faculty to students as mentors. So students are able to log into their mentoring platform on Upswing and actually connect with their mentor. So even if, again, even if they're not physically meeting with that mentor on campus, they're able to go in and do an online mentoring session. And what will happen is they'll, they'll schedule it and They'll have a recurring, let's say, weekly uh, mentoring session where they know that you know every Friday at 4 p.m. I'm going to go in, talk with my mentor, um, talk to him or her about the week, um, what I accomplished, feeling, um, some of my career aspirations, and we found that you know that's a that's kind of a it's kind of a really unique way to begin impacting the 
the whole retention aspect of things are really beginning to drive up student success where, you know, not all students drop out of college because um, they don't know the subject material. A lot of them might, you know, they might feel like it's not worth their time or they might feel like, you know, I'm just not really connected into the community here at the school. And often, you know, we found that having that mentor helps to break down some of those, um, those question marks in the student's mind. So that is something that, you know, Carmen, if you guys are interested, we can talk to you a bit more about how the mentorship component actually works on upswing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, okay, another, you know, the third thing here that's, that's really impactful for some of these mission-driven colleges is, again, this sense of community and involvement. Um, I want to share with you guys a really cool story about one of the colleges that we're working with, uh, Paul Quinn College up in Dallas. Um, they're very unique. They're an HBCU, and um, you know, about six years ago, they decided to abandon their football team. And instead of having the football team on campus, uh, what they did was they decided to turn the football field into a community garden. Um, pretty crazy, and as you can imagine, you know, taking away football in a college in Texas. Um, you're essentially digging your own grave, but that's not what happened. What ended up happening was actually the exact opposite, where um, students, students at Paul Quinn College became really engaged with the community garden. Um, it became a really good way for them, you know, not only to have this sense of, um, you know, community at their college, but they also had a almost like an additional sense of purpose where they were going out and um, a lot of their work study was revolving around you know, learning about the garden or doing gardening themselves. And um, it became a really cool way for Paul Quinn College to expand kind of beyond just the academic side of, of college and into, um, you know, more of like the mission or more of the, um, you know, more of the purpose-driven side of things. So, you know, doing different things like that. Um, and obviously, you know, not every college can turn their football field into a community garden, but thinking of ways to, you know, really build up that level of community on campus is important. Um, even if it's just, you know, trying to promote more student groups or um, providing a bit more funding to some of the student groups, um, often that level of community is one of the things that resonates most, um, most strongly with students. Um, and then that, that also, you know, kind of gets them into the last one, which is helping to see the bigger picture. So helping to see them, uh, helping them to see the picture beyond college and see, for example, you know, what is, what is college actually preparing me for? Um, you know, is it preparing me for the workforce? Am I preparing for a transfer to another college? Am I, um, you know, am I trying to, am I trying to graduate next semester? Um, basically taking some time to sit down with students and just talk to them about um, what are their goals? What are, um, what are they trying to accomplish with college and where do they want to go afterwards? Um, those things are really important. Um, and we've seen that those are especially important in some of these mission-driven colleges. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess I want to take a couple minutes and just let you guys, you know, ask any additional questions that you have. Um, one of the things that I think will be helpful for you guys next is just taking in some of these ideas and... Um, thinking about what's, you know, how can you best improve your college? What, what are some of the issues you run into? And um, what are some ways that you can start resolving or addressing those issues? Yeah, thanks so much, guys. It was, um, you know, it was really great having everyone in here for the webinar. And I really appreciate um, those of you who, you know, provided input or questions or some thoughts in here. Um, that's really, you know, that's really what we want to do here is just start to start to connect everyone more so and have these conversations around, you know, what works really well, what doesn't. Um, I think it, I think, you know, higher education in general, we all go to conferences and stuff, but I don't think we take enough time kind of day to day to just talk with, talk with counterparts at other colleges and see what they're doing and see what's working well. So hopefully, you know, us sharing some of this information with you was, was helpful. Um, what, you know, what we'll do next is I'll send out a, um, a recap of this webinar. I'll send you guys out a video. Um, if you want to share it with anyone else on campus, um, that'd be great. Um, feel free to, you know, pass on my contact info to anyone else. It's just alex at upswing.io. Um, and I'll be following up with you guys afterwards. Yeah, I can also, um, 
I'll also send out a copy of the PowerPoint as well. So Carmen, and I can make sure to send that to you and um, everyone else as well. You should get a copy of the PowerPoint if you attended the webinar today. All right. Um, if you guys do think of anything else, have any questions, or you know, maybe even just want to know like how how are certain um, how are certain things being achieved at some of the colleges that we work with, we'd love to share that information with you. Feel free to give me a call, shoot us an email um, anytime. All right. Well, thanks so much, you guys. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, and again, thanks for joining us.